Hi everybody, welcome to the latest video all about web's first data and images that's been returned. There's a lot of rubbish being posted on uh, the internet at the moment and following on from the success of the video I did yesterday, I thought I'd put this together to tell you all about what the images are actually showing us. So here we go. Okay, here's my take on the images and data that have now been released from the James Webb Space Telescope. It all started a couple of Mondays ago with an absolute disastrous uh, webcast from NASA, from the White House apparently, and uh, Joe Biden released this image. I'm not sure what those three people on the left hand side are doing in these uh, Web Space Telescope hexagon frames, but because they never actually spoke, never did anything, and it was just, yeah, really strange. But this image is absolutely amazing. But what does it show us? It shows hundreds, maybe thousands of galaxies in there, because almost every spot, every little smudge of light is a distant galaxy. Now, galaxies contain up to 100 billion stars, and they reckon there are at least 100 billion galaxies out there in our universe. So the Webb Space Telescope looking in infrared can see more distant galaxies than Hubble could because they are redshifted into that wavelength. So we're seeing many more galaxies in this image than Hubble could at the time. But what are we seeing? We're seeing the clusters of galaxies, but we're seeing these streaks and um things and galaxies look like they're sort of pulled out a bit like salvador dali's paintings hopefully i can try and explain what's going on when the Webb space telescope looks at an object like this galaxy cluster here it collects the light that's coming in from the cluster down to the images stores it and then sends it back to earth if that galaxy cluster is a lot further away and in this case, some of the galaxies we are looking at are 13.5 billion light years from us. They're red shifted, so I've made these slightly red. And of course, that light is taking 13.5 billion years to reach us, traveling at 186,282 miles per second. That's absolutely phenomenal. With this galaxy, cluster there's another cluster in the way it looks bigger because it's nearer to us it might be the same size as the other galaxy cluster but i don't know all the details of that as yet but as light normally travels in a straight line well light always travels in a straight line but it is affected by things if you look through a lens what you will find is that light is distorted and bent by the lens so if i hold that up to my head you can see quite clearly it's distorting the image of my face and you can see that uh, the light's bouncing around all sorts of places and uh, yeah all sorts of stuff going on there and it's the same with gravity gravity affects light it diffracts light it bends light in effect so as the light traveling the straight lines goes past that galaxy cluster the light is bent by the gravity of that cluster. Now that cluster is 4.6 billion light years from us. So it's a lot closer. We're seeing that at the time that our solar system was formed. Yes, the sun, the planets and everything else were formed 4.6 billion years ago. And because light's taken that long to reach us, we are seeing them as they were 4.6 billion years ago. Now, if someone on a planet there had a telescope that looked straight towards the Earth and they could see the Earth and the solar system, they would see us now as we were 4.6 billion years ago. So they would be able to see the sun and the Earth forming in this, in this cloud of gas and dust that formed the solar system. But let's go back to the galaxies. So here we are, we've got two galaxies. We've got a galaxy cluster really close and we've got a galaxy cluster way, way off in the distance. Now the light from the distant cluster normally travels in a straight line just like that. But because that galaxy cluster is in the way, 
Light may come straight through that cluster, but the gravitational force will bend and diffract it away from us. So we can't see the galaxies behind it quite so well. Some of it might reach us. But, so any light that's sort of coming around the cluster will bend and be directed towards Earth and towards the Webb Space Telescope. So if we look along that line of sight, we notice that this galaxy cluster, instead of being there, is actually seen to be there. So it's moved away in position. And equally so, any light coming past the galaxy cluster this way from the same galaxy cluster will be bent towards us and towards the Webb Space Telescope. So if we look back along that line of sight, that galaxy cluster appears to be there. So we've got an image of the galaxy cluster caused by the gravitational force bending the light around the galaxy cluster. The trouble is, nothing's perfect. Those distant galaxies are going to look warped and distorted, just like a Salvador Dali painting. And you can see that quite clearly in the image. Let's have a look at the image again. Here it is. So you can see this is a bright star, a couple of bright stars here. So this is the galaxy in the foreground. So this galaxy cluster here, shown in a whiter light, is the cluster that's closest to Earth, 4.6 billion light years away. But you see these little red galaxies, they are the most distant ones away from us. They're red shifted, don't forget, so they look redder. And that's shown in this image. But if you look at the top here, you can see this wonderful galaxy here, which has been warped, looks a bit, a little bit like, like a slug. Now this gravitational lensing that's going on here, they call this Einstein's ring as well, because he was the first person to predict this would happen. It stretches the galaxies into these streaks and it also magnifies them. So it makes them a bit brighter than they would necessarily be if we were to observe them directly. So we can see lots going on in here and hopefully that explains why we get these streaks and curves and things from the distant galaxies way off in the background caused by the gravitational pull of the nearer galaxy cluster stretching that light out into those arcs. Another great data release are the spectrographs. Of course, one of the things that uh, the Webb Space Telescope will be looking for is exoplanets. Well, not looking for exoplanets, but looking at existing exoplanets that we know about and getting the spectra of the planet itself, either directly or as it passes in front of uh, its star and then collecting that light and we can see the signature of its atmosphere on the spectrum. And with this first one, sent back you can see this is an exoplanet called wasp 96b and those peaks show you that they've already detected water in the atmosphere of that exoplanet which is quite amazing and i'm sure as they use other filters with the web space telescope they'll detect more and more um, components of the atmosphere and hopefully we'll be able to find any planets out there that might be suitable for life to exist or even could have life on them. So although spectra don't really get all the publicity of the wonderful images that are going to be returned, it's still absolutely fantastic data. So don't ignore the spectrum that is coming through. This is the uh, Southern Ring Nebula. Beautiful planetary nebula has nothing to do with planets. They were just called planetary nebula because when they were first discovered they thought it looked like a faint planetary disk and so that the name is stuck and this is in the southern hemisphere so we can't see this uh, particular planetary nebula but it's a star towards the end of its life as it runs out of hydrogen helium and tries to burn all sorts of other um, elements that have been formed inside we get a shell of gas thrown off by the star and you can see it wonderful here there's an absolutely beautiful structure in there and it's long been suspected that there was a double star at the center of this uh, planetary nebula not just a single star and you can see that in the right hand image the thing i love about this image as well and if you look at the left hand side of the image you can see this absolutely beautiful 
edge on spiral galaxy way off in the distance because a planetary nebula is in our Milky Way galaxy and that edge on galaxy and these little galaxies here are way way off in the distance behind the uh, planetary nebula absolutely fantastic stuff an object I know quite well Stefan's Quintet I've tried to image it not very successfully um, in the past but I will go and revisit it now now I've got a bit better telescope and equipment to do it and they're showing these five galaxies interacting and you can see in this image this interaction here is causing starburst formation so these are red areas hydrogen alpha areas where the interaction between the galaxies is called shock waves and that sets off more star production so nurseries of stars build up and these red areas show that really really nicely and here we are with uh, a different filter and you can see in the middle of this galaxy here a very very bright object and that's actually a black hole being identified in the middle of that particular galaxy the beautiful Carina Nebula, this is a cloud of gas and dust where stars and planets probably are being made within it. And we can see an absolutely hundreds, even thousands of stars on this object, which is absolutely amazing. I love a couple of features on here. Just down here, we've got this little finger sort of sticking up. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. That's a beautiful little structure there. But up on the left hand side, just over here, we've also got this beautiful bit sticking out into uh, the cloud. And you can see all these stars within the cloud that we couldn't see before because infrared light comes through that cloud of gas and dust. And we can see those hundreds or thousands of stars within that cloud of dust and gas. And if we compare that to a Hubble image, here's the Hubble image on the left hand side of the same area. And you can see there are very few stars are visible. There's a few which are towards the top of the uh, nebula. But using the Webb Space Telescope here, you can see just how much more stars are visible within that cloud of gas and dust. Because the infrared light, because they're warm, sending lots of heat our way, that infrared is picked up by the Webb Space Telescope and we can see those within that cloud of gas and dust. Of course, it's not just deep space objects that the Webb Space Telescope is going to be able to take data on and image. Here's an image of, or a couple of images of Jupiter taken with different filters. And you can see quite clearly the uh, clouds the belts and zones on jupiter here you can see the red spot over here as well and there's quite a few moons metis europa is really bright and thebe here and you can also see the uh, very very faint rings and if we look at it in another filter you can see it looks really really spectacular you can see this wonderful red spot you see the shadow of europa there as well and europa is so overexposed producing those spikes and here's a wonderful image from webb showing the cloud belts some structure in and around the great red spot and you can see the ring beautifully displayed here absolutely wonderful image so it's not just deep sky stuff don't forget that it's also going to be looking at our planets in our solar system and it's going to be looking at asteroids as well and getting more information on them so what it did it also did some tracking Ooh. So what it also did was some tracking of an asteroid this is asteroid 6481 tenzing and it's moving about the same speed as mars does in the sky so what they wanted to do was to see whether the web space telescope could successfully track that and you can see quite clearly it moving away from the bright star there and it's tracking it really really nicely so absolutely beautiful stuff Messier 74, this beautiful spiral galaxy, or NGC 628, 32 million light years away. And with the infrared cameras, we can see right into the galaxy through the dust lanes and see this absolutely beautiful structure.
And if we compare that to a Hubble Space Telescope image on the right hand side, you can see just how much detail we're seeing within the galaxy. There's lots of dust and gas in our way here, so we can't see it. But the Webb Space Telescope, having the infrared camera, can look through that and can see all this gas and dust and all these areas where there's lots of infrared coming through. But what does it show us? Well, there's a couple of things I point I sort of noticed on here. The main one being this really dark area over here. And you can see there's quite a few scattered around. And I was reading recently that it might be because there's been a number of supernovas in that area. And what it's done, the shock waves from those has cleared that area. So there's very little infrared light coming our way, producing this big bubble within the galaxy. So really interesting stuff coming on. And then the last galaxy to look at, NGC 7496, which is 24 million light years away. And we're seeing all this structure within as well. And we're seeing the sort of bubble shaped features within there, very similar to Messier 74. And again, compare it to the Hubble image on the right hand side. And you can see just how much structure we're seeing within that galaxy. So. I'm very excited with what's come out already. I hope you are, and let's look forward to another 20 years of absolutely fantastic data and some beautiful images. Thanks, web team. Keep up the great work.